Hello, we're going to derive the demand functions from this intertemporal choice problem. So here's our utility function, where C subscript 1 is the consumption in period 1, C subscript 2 is the consumption in period 2, beta here is the consumer's subjective discount rate, which we're going to assume is greater than 0, and because it's greater than zero, the consumer prefers a dollar of consumption in period one to a dollar of consumption in period two, all else being equal. The consumer's budget constraint, you can think of it as the discounted value of income, M, must equal the discounted value of consumption. So we can think of the consumer's budget constraint like this where R is going to be the interest rate. So here's our utility function once again. We are going to get the marginal utility for consumption in period one and consumption in period two, given by these respective partial derivatives. So the partial derivative of the utility function with respect, with respect to consumption in period one is just one over C subscript one. And likewise, the marginal utility of consumption in period two is given by this result. We are going to form the marginal rate of substitution, which is the marginal utility in consumption one, in marginal utility of consumption in period one divided by the marginal utility of consumption in period two. So just putting our results together here and simplifying, we get this. Rewriting our budget constraint, we can think of the price of consumption in period one as just a coefficient in front of this C subscript one term, which is just one. And so the price of consumption in period two will be the coefficient in front of the C subscript two term, or just one divided by one plus the interest rate. Putting together the ratio of the prices here, and simplifying, we get just 1 plus r. So utility maximization, we're just going to set the marginal rate of substitution equal to the ratio of the prices. So making our substitution here, here is the marginal rate of substitution, the thing we got here on the left-hand side. And that's just going to equal the ratio of the prices, 1 plus r. And now we can just simplify this. Uh, let's say let's solve it for C subscript 2. And you get this result. One thing to note here is if R equals beta, you'll have complete consumption smoothing. The consumer will consume the same amount in each period. OK. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this expression for consumption in period 2 and plug it into the budget constraint. So where I have the C subscript 2 here, I'm plugging in this result, and that's what I have down below. Moving on, just rewriting that result from the last slide. We're going to now solve this for C subscript 1. So you'll notice here the 1 plus R divided by 1 plus R cancel. On the left-hand side, I'll factor out. C subscript 1. Going to get a common like denominator here in parentheses, so we can add those up. And the left hand side becomes the following. And now just basically multiplying through by uh, this reciprocal here, we'll get this result. And that is the consumption demand in period one. So this is the consumer's consumption demand in period one. Let's get the consumption demand in period two. Again, we saw this result uh, in the last slide. And so what I'm going to do is for C subscript one here, I'm just going to plug in everything in red here on the right hand side. And you'll get this result the 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta will cancel and you're left with this. So this is the demand 
for consumption in period two. And that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.